A very good evening once again, and uh, we are covering uh, Hebrews chapter 9. We, I guess we've, we stopped at 10, but I'm not uh, convinced. So I will start at 11. The heavenly sanctuary constructs, contrasting with uh, the earthly sanctuary. The Bible says from verse 11, but Christ came as a high priest of the good things to come with the greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, talking about human hands, that is of this earthly creation, not with the blood of goats and the calves, no, but with his own blood. He entered the most holy place once uh, for all. Uh, yes, having obtained eternal redemption. Now, our redemption is eternal. Christ is not coming back to die again for the sins of the world. He's not coming back to die again for the sicknesses of the world. He died once and for all. That's why Moses also had to strike the rock only once, not twice, because Christ would only do that once. He was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we were healed. So you did it only once and for all. That redemption to be redeemed is to be ransomed in full. Just like we've been singing uh, the hymn 988. Uh, yes, uh, he paid the ransom. To be redeemed is to be ransomed in full. And uh, what I will advise all of us when we read the Bible, let us have a dictionary so that we can... Uh, actually know the definitions of the words we are reading. And uh, <clears throat> it will help us to understand better what God expects of us. So it is eternal. It's not coming back to do it the second time. And he did not go there with the blood of bulls and goats. He went there with his own blood because it is impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to to completely remit our sins. It can only cover them, atone for them until the perfect time when Christ would come and take them away. That's why John the Baptist says, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away, he's not covering it anymore. He was preaching the remission, the entire removal, and uh, the penalty attached to the transgression also taken away, expunged the remission of sins, not the atonement of sins, but the remission of sins. It says, verse 13, For if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of a heifer, uh, the sprinkling of uh, uh, sprinkling the, the unclean and sanctifies for the purifying of the flesh, how much more? That was in the Old Testament. They had to, to do all those sacrifices. The bull was for the sacrifice of the whole, the sin of the whole nation, and for the sacrifice also of the high priest, meaning the sin of the leader is the sin of the whole nation. In the eyes of God, leaders have greater responsibility. I say it again. In the eyes of God, leaders or shepherds have great responsibilities. Both the religious leaders, the political leaders, and um, the princes. So the three kind of shepherds that Ezekiel is talking about is the priest, the prophets, and the king and the princes. These are the shepherds of Israel. If the prophet or the high priest takes uh, the wrong spiritual decision, he starts worshiping idols, the whole nation will not even question. That's why in the house of prayer for a nation, all of our books we have uh, backed them with the uh, scriptures. Everything we say, we have backed them with the uh, scriptures. Why do we do that? Because uh, we want to cover ourselves. The time will come. The time will come where people will be believe, blindly believe you. They will not even read the Bible anymore. What you say, for them, it is going to be 
like the voice of Christ himself, which is uh, due to obtain a miracle because the people of Galatia also received the Christ, uh, Pete, uh, Paul, as if it were Christ, as if it were an angel that came directly to them. And that's why they experienced so many miracles. That's why sometimes in Africa and in India, people receive so many miracles than in the West because uh, the openness of the heart uh, uh, makes it the breathing ground, the uh, breathing ground for miracles because they open the heart to the messenger as if he was an angel of the Lord, uh, as if uh, it was Jesus himself speaking to him. They receive him as an oracle of the Lord. We arise in Europe, we receive uh, uh, the man of God, the woman of God uh, as a brother. And if you receive him only as a brother, as a sister, you are going to receive a brother as a reward. So that's the problem. And that's why sometimes men of God would try to isolate themselves from uh, the congregation, not because um, they think they are better, but they've realized that familiarity breeds contempt. And even the hometown of Jesus, it could not do mighty miracles because for them it was Jesus, the brother. Even his own family, it was uh, the brother. Uh, in his own village, or we played football with him here in the streets of Capernaum. Now, how can he now get this wisdom and teach it? They were offended and they stumbled. That's why some men of God will put some security around them to create. Um... That's not what God wants, but they want to help the people because if the people become too familiar with them, they will also now start to despise them and uh, not be able to receive uh, miracles from them. There's a better way, but the Holy Spirit will teach us a better way in the precious name of Jesus. But uh, the sin of a leader is equivalent to the sin of the whole nation. For the sin of uh, the, the high priest, uh, they sacrificed uh, the whole uh, bull. For the sin of the whole nation, also they sacrificed the bull. Now, when we talk about Nelson Mandela, for instance, in South Africa, and Robert Mugabe in um, <clears throat> in uh, Zimbabwe, now Robert Mugabe, did people do wrong? Did the European uh, do wrong to the the Africans in uh, Austria, uh, Africa? Yes, the answer is yes. They were all wronged, and uh, they were taken advantage of. Now, should we correct the situation as the God of justice? Yes, we should correct uh, the situation. But the people that are now born there, that have grown up there, that's the home. They came from Denmark, from all the, from Britain, from France, all the other parts. Germany, they, they, they were born there. Now, they don't know Germany. They don't know Denmark. They don't know Britain anymore. Zimbabwe is the country. South Africa is the country. So there needs there, there is a way to do reparation without seeking vengeance. Now, Mugabe went about it uh, another way, which led uh, to what we know of uh, Mugabe. Now, uh, we have uh, Zimbabwe. Nelson Mandela, though he suffered even uh, more than uh, Mugabe, that's why you know Hebrews 11. Verse 3 tells you the kind of gospel that you received will shape that whole era and change the whole nation or the whole world. And Mandela was a Sunday school teacher in the Methodist church. So he knew the Bible. We knew his wife. Because of the suffering, and sometimes we suffer in life and we become bitter because of what we have gone through. And Winnie became so bitter that she got involved with uh, the people that were trying to seek revenge, killing the white people and so on. So Melissa Mandela realized that she has become so bitter. And he that was in prison was not even as bitter. He was never bitter. So the word of God would guard your heart. So when he came out, he could not marry her because she was no longer standing for what uh, he was saying. She was seeking revenge. He was not seeking revenge. You see, your Christian values and you as a leader, people were afraid and many were leaving already South Africa that it's going to be worse than uh, Zimbabwe. But because the king of peace, 
Prince of Peace is in you, and you have the understanding, even of the Methodist Church, the Bible, the class that you are teaching, it makes your man of peace. And uh, the people did not uh, take up arm to go and kill all uh, the Indians, the white people that were in South Africa, ask them to, to leave the country like Idi Amin did. Hatred is never from the Lord. And see what uh, Idi Amin has made of his country. And uh, Richie Sunak is one of the descendants of the Indian that was kicked out by Idi Amin. He came here, uh, no, not the original, he was uh, the parents were Kenyan. And there were other people that came uh, from that, that were of Indian descent that Idi Amin sent uh, back to the UK. They did not know the UK. So the leader would either lead the whole nation in the right direction or in the wrong direction, the political leaders. The, when David uh, sinned by numbering the whole nation, the whole nation that received the plague. If Brother Jerry does uh, bring a damnable doctrine, may God have mercy on me, and yet will never happen in Jesus' name. That's why we uh, put the scriptures and we allow people to question us you should never be afraid of question, not being disrespectful to anybody, but if you don't understand something that is being done, question, never follow a leader blindly. And that leader should never be offended. Do you know who I am? Nonsense. You should be able to speak the scriptures and say, no, actually what you said is right. I am wrong. That's part of humility. The women came to Moses and said, Moses, we know you speak to God face to face. 40 days and 40 and the mother, yes, Moses. But we feel like um, you not giving us an inheritance among our brothers is not fair. Can you please ask the God? He went back and said, listen to what the daughters of Zeophahad are saying, Lord. They should have an inheritance. Because said, yes, I always intended for women to have the same inheritance than men. She said, oh. I say, yes, that is your tradition of men. And as long as women were going along with that, I kept quiet. God wants to make women pastors. He wants to make women apostles, prophets, and uh, the same Holy Spirit. But as long as women are accepted to sit in the church and do nothing, or only men could be pastors, God also kept quiet. And we need to make a stand. The one that is officiating our marriage is a woman. And many pastors said, can you not think about it again? I put my, my, my money where my mouth is. That's what I believe. That there is no more male, no more female. It is time for us to advance it like that. And so shall it be in the house of prayer for all nations in Jesus' precious name. It is the same Holy Spirit, the same God that saved us. We are joint heirs with Christ Jesus, male and female. White, black, brown, yellow, red, mixed races, they are all equal. And so shall it be in Jesus' name. So let us be very careful how we are leading the people because we have great responsibility. Now, if that was under the blood of bulls and goats, now how much more shall the blood of Jesus, who through eter the eternal Holy Spirit offered himself without spot to God, cleanse your conscience? If that's the verse that uh, I received as a revelation that stopped me from a pornography and masturbation. Because I realized that uh, the devil was lying to me because you came out of a life of a sexual sin. You cannot stop uh, doing masturbation for and uh, pornography. But when I read this, that the blood of Jesus is more powerful than the blood of bulls and goats. It has the power to even cleanse your conscience from dead work so that you may serve the Lord, the living God, acceptably. The French rendition says that so that you can serve the Lord acceptably. So I started to bleed the blood of Jesus to cleanse my conscience from filthy thoughts, from all those things that are not glorifying God in Jesus' name. And all that rubbish came out of my mind. And so shall it be. There is power in the blood of Jesus because Jesus, with his blood, the Pharisees were doing right externally. So they were white, the cup was white uh, outside. 
the sepulchre or the tombs was uh, uh, painted with, um, um, how do you call it, uh, whitewash. But inside was uh, a lot of decay, a lot of corruption, rottenness. And they could not clean the inside. And Jesus is asking us, our righteousness is supposed to exceed that of the Pharisees that was only external. Now with the blood of Jesus, there is a power to cleanse the inside, to cleanse the conscience. So that when you are standing there, when Satan is trying to probe you, even in your heart, you can open your heart. There is none of that filth in your heart. Your conscience is pure. And the more your conscience becomes pure, the more God uh, speaks easily to you. Because, uh, and when you deal with uh, jealousy, you deal with envy, all the works of the flesh, the prophetic is going to become clearer and clearer, as I've explained in the application of the perfect dimension plan. A lot of people say you're rubbish in prophecy because they are so uh, full of. Uh, flesh. So all the works of the flesh, jealousy, envy, bitterness, anger, evil speaking, all that are in them. So when the Lord tried to speak, 20 to 50% of the speaking is going to be from the Lord. The other interpretation is going to come from uh, the own uh, heart. From the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks but when you surrender to Jesus, you allow the blood of Jesus to, to search your heart, hallelujah, and to cleanse your conscience from dead work, you'll be able to fluid. You, you are going to be able to be used as a, an oracle. Uh, God. That is the secret of prophecy. Now, when you are going to sit there, you are going to, the, Lord, the voice is going to come to you. This person is living in fornication. It is no longer... Uh, prejudice that you have or a judgment that you have, you realize that you've dealt with those kind of prejudices. You don't look down on anyone who is uh, living in fornication, but your heart is actually bleeding in pain, seeking uh, them to be saved. So when now you have the thought that this person is living in fornication, you know it's the Holy Spirit speaking to you because you are not judgmental anymore. You've dealt with that. When now the Lord says to this person is a thief, you are not envious of the person because he has a big car and so on and so forth. You've dealt with envy and jealousy. You have learned to be content. So now when you hear this person is a thief, though he's dressed well, you know that this is the Holy Spirit speaking to you. No longer your fault now because you have been crucified with Christ. Galatians chapter 2 verse 20, nevertheless you live. But the life that you now live, you, so you remain dead. Yourself. The life that you now live in the flesh, you live by the faith of the Son of God who uh, died for you, who loved you. So the Holy Spirit now expresses himself. Jesus is continuing his life uh, through you. And the more you die, the more the prophecy becomes uh, clearer and clearer and clearer in the name of Jesus. We hinder the flow of the Spirit because we don't clean the inside. I was in Manchester, a wonderful sister was prophesying. She had a husband. Uh, husband uh, was a short. And then uh, and I was tall. And she she wanted a husband. He was an American. He wanted a husband. She wanted a husband to be promoted, uh, head evangelist, and so on and so forth. And started to prophesy. That's the Lord. David was a short, he was a man after God's own hands. Saul was tall in height. <laughs> and he used to obey the Lord. If the kingdom was transferred. So I was just listening to those kind of um, prophecies. And but thank God that my heart was already prepared. I know it was our insecurities and uh, envy and chalices that was speaking. So that was not even a prophecy from the Lord. And the pastor later prophesied, because we no longer have the courage and the guts to sit, we'll shut up. What you are saying is rubbish. Sit down. That's not the Lord. That is your flesh speaking. You need to be able to put people back to the place. But if it is not your church, leave them with the rubbish. In the name of 
She's about now someone who has a good heart towards you. Now, my spiritual mother sees me say, oh, Jerry, Father, I thank you because he's a very, very tall man. Oh, I pray that he will have a faith of a giant, that uh, he will kill the Goliath like David killed the Goliath. You see, the, the, the prophecy is starting with my height, which is true. But the heart is good. And now he's praying for me to be a giant in the faith. Someone can prophesy based on the same thing that God is showing. But the interpretation of the person can be completely rubbish because of the envy, the jealousy, and the competition. That's why we judge every prophecy. And so shall it be. So leaders, even in your home, purify your heart. Cleanse your conscience. The blood of Jesus has that power. Any Christian that says that cannot clean my mind does not know the truth. You have the power to take. That, that's why Paul said you can take captive, captive every thought and imagination that exalts itself against the, the knowledge of God. God, this is what you say. This rubbish cannot be in my head. This rubbish cannot be in my heart. Satan will try to tempt you to be envious, jealous, and so on and so forth. I say, no, God, I bless them. In Jesus' name. And uh, put the super light on the YouTube channel. God bless them. Continue to bless them because I know I am building a skyscraper. They have a bungalow. If someone uh, who is building a skyscraper, uh, Empire State Building, or the Twin Towers, and he sees uh, someone who has just completed his bungalow, will he be jealous and envious if someone who has completed the bungalow? No. He, he was congratulating, thank you for, for completing your Bengal. I'm still on my project because I'm building a skyscraper. So I should not be insecure. I should believe the vision of that was and bless him and encourage him in Jesus' precious name. You need to know who you are. And God is going to help you. He's going to now flow effortlessly through you. There is a power in the blood of Jesus. No longer allow rubbish in your head. No longer allow rubbish in your heart. The blood of Jesus has the power to cleanse all that nonsense. Our righteousness must exceed that of the Pharisees that Jesus said. It should not just be the outward one. We are smiling with our face, but in our heart, we are thinking other these things. What you see with me, now I'm still a work in progress, but what I intend to do, that my words are binding, my yes is yes, my no is no. If I need to tell you something, you are going to hear that from my lips. And I mean what I say, and I say what I mean. Be that kind of Christian. Your words are binding. They're not going to come back and change. The God says, I'm the Lord, I do not change. Be like your Father in heaven. And the angels are going to respect you. They are going to, your heart is going to believe what is coming out of your mouth. And Satan is going to respect you. There is power in the blood of Jesus. He says, and for this reason, Jesus is the mediator of this new covenant by means of death. Uh, for the redemption of the transgressions under the first covenant. So we broke the law that was under the first commandment. So he came and redeemed us, ransomed us. Instead of us receiving the punishment, because the wages of sin being death, he died. We did not escape. He died. He paid the price. That's why we can uh, now go free. That those who are called may receive the promise of eternal, uh, uh, the eternal uh, inheritance. So that's what we received under the blood of Jesus. Let us not live a uh, mediocre <clears throat> Christian life. Let us not fly with uh, or and flock with uh, barnyard uh, birds, but let us soar with eagles in the name of Jesus. Now, the mediator's death necessary. Now, from 16, he says, for where there is a testament, there must of necessity be the death of the testator for the testament to be enforced. For a testator, the testament, sorry, is enforced after men are dead. Since uh, it is no, it has no power at all while the testator lives. 
therefore, not even the first covenant was dedicated or ratified without uh, blood. For when Moses had spoken precepts to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of calves and goats and water and scarlet uh, wool and hyssop and sprinkled both the book itself and uh, the people. So when we were in the Catholic Church, when the the, the priest was doing uh, the Holy Communion or Eucharist, he was always uh, doing the symbolism. He would take some wine, put it there, and the water, the wine was symbolic of the blood of Jesus. Uh, the water was symbolic of the water of the word of God. And then he would put some uh, a broom that, that was supposed to be his up. And then he would sprinkle the book, the covenant, to, to our meaning that our there's a shedding of blood. Someone has already died. That's why he has left us a testament. So who is a, a blood relative to be able to claim rightfully that uh, that the testament? So you now sprinkle also the congregation. You are the blood relatives are the one who is deceased to Christ. You can come and claim the promises uh, in the testament. So that was what prophetically Moses was doing. That was uh, and still what uh, the Catholic Church is doing, but without explaining to us uh, what they mean. So you need the word of God. You need the blood of Jesus to be washed. Your sin needs to be washed in the blood of Jesus like mine was washed, like yours was washed to qualify you to be partaker of that inheritance uh, in Christ uh, Jesus. That's why he sprinkled uh, the blood on the book. He read the terms of the covenant. You see, we are entering into a covenant to be part of this family, to be married to Christ. They will read the terms of the covenant. What you did before does not uh, truly matter when you receive Christ. So the way they lived in Egypt, in idol worship and everything was the thing of the past. Now, when they applied the blood of the lamb on the doorpost and the lintel, and then they came out of Egypt. They arrived at the Mount uh, Horeb for the Lord to ratify a covenant in his own blood. He had to tell them what are the terms of the covenant, and you need to agree before we can sign. So Moses in Exodus chapter 19 stipulated all the terms of uh, the covenant. He read it out loud, and the people agreed. They say what. Well, Everything that the Lord has said, we agree to it and we will do it. Therefore, Moses now went on the mountain and uh, brought now the contract, the two tablets of stones. And then uh, the Lord wrote on it and he sprinkled the blood on it and also spread uh, the, the blood and water with the hyssop on uh, the people. Now, people would not understand uh, uh, they say that, oh, because your, all your sins are forgiven, then you can live anyhow. No, you can't live anyhow. They forgive you your past. Now they've stipulated the terms of this new covenant. We are expunging all your sins. Now you need to live according to this standard. Do you agree? Yes or not? Is the same thing in the new covenant. Let everyone that now names the name of the Lord depart from iniquity. No fornicators, no adulterers, no homosexuals, no uh, murderer, no covetous person shall inherit, no sodomite, and the list goes on according to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 and 10. Paul is in a nutshell stipulating the terms of the covenant that we agreed upon and then he gave us a new testament and he shed his blood we cannot live anyhow we need to live a life that is befitting repentance we need to live a life uh, that uh, is pleasing unto the lord we need to present our body a living sacrifice holy and acceptable which is our reasonable worship our diary was paid for and we ratified, we agreed with that covenant, and uh, we signed it. So, 
verse uh, uh, 20 saying, this is the blood of the covenant which God has commanded you. And that's why when we take the Holy Communion, we are renewing. We are saying to Jesus, we are still, just like a couple after 10 years comes and uh, do the renewal of the vows. They, so they reaffirm to one another the love and reaffirm to one another the loyalty and their faithfulness. Whenever we partake of the wine, we are proclaiming his death and until he comes again. So we are the bride. We are waiting for him to, re, to, to return. So if we are waiting for him to return and take us, we, we are engaged to him. That's the legal term to be betrothed. We are engaged to him. And yes, Peter Dari is coming back for the second part of the marriage to take us now with him. So meanwhile, just as if we were already married, the wedding reception is going to be in heaven uh, with the marriage of the Lamb. And blessed, blessed means uh, happy and to be envied. Blessed are those who are called to the wedding of the Lamb. You are going to be envied on the day of that wedding in Jesus' name. That's what the word blessed, happy, and envied. So meanwhile, you need to keep yourself clean and pure, not to stain your robe of righteousness, your white gown, which is the symbol of the robe of righteousness. We agree that, Lord, we are going to keep our wedding gown white, not stained. We are going to keep ourselves pure. We are waiting for you. We agree the terms that you stipulated in uh, the covenant. So that's what we are truly doing when we are taking the Holy Communion. Every time we are doing that in remembrance of him, he's coming back for us, the bride. Now, <clears throat> Bible says, then likewise, uh, he sprinkled, Christ Jesus now sprinkled with blood, both the tabernacle and all the vessels of uh, ministry. And according to the law, almost uh, all things are purified with uh, blood. And without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. To be remitted is uh, to avert the penalty attached to a particular sin. The Lord did not just uh, forgive us, but uh, he removed the penalty. For instance, if you murdered someone, the parent of uh, the family can say, we truly forgive you for murdering our son. We are Christians. Yet the judicial system is going to take you in prison. They say, are you remorseful for what you did? Yes. Still, you have 15 years uh, of imprisonment. So you were forgiven. They are not uh, harboring any grudge or bitterness or a hatred. Still, you need to pay for your crimes. Well, you have 15 years uh, of imprisonment uh, for good behavior. You can come out after 12 uh, years. So it was not remitted, though you were forgiven. And the same way also, Paul is going to address the case later on in the book of Hebrews. That when we now willfully and uh, defiantly sin against the Lord, there is no more sacrifice for sin. So... Though God forgives us, he's not going to remit the sin. But the fearful expectation of the judgment, God is going to punish. God uh, ended up punishing uh, uh, Solomon because he willfully and defiantly disobeyed the Lord. God ended up punishing uh, uh, Samson because he willfully and defiantly broke uh, his uh, consecration of the Nazarite and so on and uh, so forth. He ended up removing the king's soul. He forgave him. I regret just uh, uh, putting you there. I have found another man. He forgave Esau, but he did not uh, remit. He removed his birthright and gave it to Jacob. He lost his destiny. So when we willfully and defiantly uh, sin against the Lord, after we've received the the knowledge of the truth, like what's going to tell us in Hebrews chapter 10, then uh, there is no more sacrifice because we knew the truth and we still went ahead. Oh, God is too soft. He is going to still forgive me even if I, I live anyhow. 
then uh, that sin is not going to be remitted. Mm -hmm. So we need to know how we behave, which is very, very important. That's why Jesus said to his disciples, the sins of some you can remit, I will remit them, the sins of others you can retain, and I'm going to retain it against them. And there was one brother who was sinning so much in the church. God said, Paul said, I've delivered his body to Satan to be destroyed so that at least his soul can be saved. So we need to be very careful the way we live our Christian life in Jesus' name. Now, last part, the greatness of Christ's sacrifice. He says, therefore, it was necessary that the copy of the things in heaven should be purified with this, even the very blood of Jesus. But the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifice than this. So the first one was purified by bloods of bulls, goats, ashes of heifers. But uh, the heavenly sanctuary was purified by the very blood of Jesus that he put on the mercy seat. And for Christ has not entered the holy place, uh, the holy places, both the holy place and the holy of holies are made uh, with hands, that is the earthly one, which are copies uh, of the true, but he entered into the heaven itself now to appear in the presence of god for us we have someone who is fully human christ became a man and even in his glorified form he did not go back into the first place the first form he had before uh became on earth forever he identifies as a man. And part of intercession, which many do not understand, uh, is identifying with the people that you are praying for. Not just the mere prayer. When you feel their pain, when you feel what they are going through, you completely identify. That's the beginning of intercession. Moses was in the palace. He was a prince of Egypt like Stephen is explaining to the to the chief scribes and chief priests. He was a prince of Egypt. It was not to his benefit to come and identify with this bunch of slaves, no. Yet, he was so touched and moved by the affliction of, of his people. He left uh, the palace, just like Christ. Moses is a type of Christ. He left the palace where he was and he came to his brethren you know, usually the brethren rejected him, but he was the deliverer. The same thing also, Christ was rejected by his brethren, but he is the deliverer. He identified with them in the suffering. When you are called to intercede for Africa, like Rainer Bank, you would identify with Africa. You will pray and fast, not for Germany, but for Africa. A lot of us are not intercessors. I say it again. A lot of us are not intercessors in Europe. Because all of our prayer and all of our fasting is for our country back home. And we are claiming God has sent us to Europe. Who are you deceiving? I never fast uh, for Congo anymore. That's not true. When the Lord asks us to do a small fast, because of something, the, the longest I fasted since I came to Europe. When I was in Congo, I interceded for 18 months in the 90s with my family for the war to be averted. Now, since I came to Europe, since the Lord called me to, the, to, to Europe, the most I fasted for my country was three days and three nights. All my fasting are for this continent of Europe. I identify with uh, Europe. I kneel down and I weep for Europe. I cry for the souls uh, of Europe. You identify to be able to intercede. That's the, the intercession 101. And Christ forever, he identifies as a human. Even in his glorified body, the way he intercedes first and foremost is by saying, Father, I have limited myself. He that was limitless, he was God, equal to God, like Paul said to the Philippians. He did not consider it a robbery to be equal to God. But he limited himself once and for all throughout eternity to be in the body of clay. 
and even his glorified body is still confined in the form of a human. The Holy Spirit is everywhere at the same time. The Christ is confined in the body of a man forever. That's how we intercede first and foremost. Before even praying, he has identified with us forever. Let us identify with the people of the land once and for all. You need to take responsibility. They are your people. That's what God was trying to say to Moses. You need to take them as if it was your own baby. He said, I did not give birth to them. See, carry them in your bosom as if it was your own baby. If it were your own baby that was... For any of you who is a mother here, if it was your baby that had any disease and they told you that if only you can uh, fast 40 days and 40 nights, then your baby is going to be healed of that terminal disease. You do not do it. You do everything that is in the power of your hand to see to it that that child is healed. And that's what intercession is truly about. Your heart is broken. You are well, uh, willing even to lay for some of you who are mothers. You are even willing to lay down your life for the child. That's how you are so linked and uh, bonding with that child. You sometimes become an inseparable uh, with that child because what the child is going through, you are going through the same pain. That is intercession. And if you do not feel that for the lost souls, you can cry. It's going to be a lip service. The prayer is not coming from uh, the recesses of your heart. So forever Christ has uh, limited himself in the body of a man. He is seated. There is a man in heaven, Christ Jesus, at the right side of uh, God. He's representing all men and women. Men, I say mankind. Forever. And he can plead our case. He's the last Adam, not the first Adam, the last Adam, the perfect man. And God wants to see that Christ Jesus in you, that he's going to be pleased uh, with you. So he entered into the real, the Holy of Holies, not. Uh, verse 25, not uh, uh, that he should offer himself uh, often, like I've explained before, as the high priest enters uh, the most holy place every year with uh, the blood of another, not his own blood, but uh, he then would have to suffer and be crucified as often uh, uh, since the foundation of uh, the world. But Christ is also once at the end of the age, he has appeared. To put away sin by the suffering, rather by the sacrifice of himself. So sin has been dealt with once and for all. So if someone wants to say, that's a lie. If someone says, no, I can't stop this sin, that's a lie. Because the power is available. You can't stop that, those kind of thoughts. That's a lie. The blood of Jesus is available. It has the power to cleanse your conscience. You are not willing to take your responsibility. Part of Christianity is taking responsibility, agreeing with God. I say, God, I agree with what you say. Sin should, should no longer have dominion over my life. Full stop. Even the appearance of sin, I'm going to destroy it in Jesus' name. So once and for all, he has dealt with sin. There is a power available. Any voice that tells you otherwise is a lying voice. So there are some Christians that are saying that all oh, Christians can still masturbate. It is just a habit. Instead of telling people the truth, that there is a power in the name of Jesus to stop the, all those behavior which are sinful, they want you to they want to give you and I excuses. And people who have itching ears, they would tune to those uh, pastors to listen to them. Then, then it is still uh, okay to masturbate. It is still okay to watch pornography. Today, even some churches have Christian pornography. That is not uh, what Jesus told me. Sin should no longer have dominion over you. And over me also in Jesus' name. So let us examine ourselves. If we are still in the faith or we have actually departed from the faith because Christ 
dealt with sin once and for all in the name of Jesus. And let us draw closer to him so that he can continue to purify us by the washing of the water of the word of God. When you read the word, agree with uh, the word. And verse 27, he says, and as it is appointed for men and women, of course, to die only once, uh, but after this uh, judgment, I was telling uh, someone on Sunday afternoon that uh, the reincarnation is not uh, biblical. So when you die, you only die once, there, and then it is judgment. So if there is a time for you to be saved, it is now. And I reiterated on that Sunday that even my grandfather is in hell. It has nothing to do with emotion. He refused to repent. My grandmother, who used to visit witch doctors and do all kinds of things, she repented and was saved. She's in heaven. So there is no feelings here that uh, because it is my grandfather, I'm going to change the gospel. That's why we need to preach the gospel to all of our family members, because if they do not receive, even pray for them on their dying bed, they will receive Jesus. Pray the thief on the cross. He received Christ on the cross. So continue to pray that they will receive, even at the last moment of their life, continue to pray because they are not coming back. The only time that you can be saved is now. That's why we need to pray. Those who are dying today without Christ, they are not going into a purgatory. There is no purgatory. That's a lie invented by the Catholic Church to collect the money of indulgences from rich people. That's a lie. The same lie is now perpetrated by Pentecostals for healing soul, 10,000 pounds, and you are going to have the biggest miracle. It's the same thing. They were sowing lots of money to receive the indulgence letter from the Pope to redeem your time from the purgatory so that you can go to heaven. It is all a scam. Well, let us choose Christ now. Let us be eager to serve him, because after we die, it is only judgment. So Christ uh, offered himself once also to bear the sins of many, even of the whole world. To those who eagerly wait for him, he will appear the second time. But now he is going to appear apart from sin, not to deal with sin, but for salvation of the body, to give us a glorified body. And when the trumpet are going to blow, the dead in Christ are going to be raised, coming out of the grave, and we are going to ascend and meet Jesus in heaven. Those of us who are alive at the coming of Jesus, we are going to meet him in the air. And so shall it be like Paul was explaining to the Thessalonian church. We need to know the truth. And we need to be love doesn't mean that we hide the truth from people. Church is not a social club. Though we go for a Christmas dinner together, we go for a safari park to the beach. But uh, it is not a social club, though we do life together. Church uh, primary is to prepare people for the rapture, to prepare people to be in the kingdom of heaven forever, so that they can also influence uh, the life uh, uh, with the life of people around them. It is not a social club. So we need, if we love the people, we will tell them the truth. If someone uh, someone says, how, how much of sin can I continue to tolerate? I can tell you, if you knew what you are drinking has uh, some uh, acid in it that is going to kill you. So how much of acid do you want to be drinking? And so, okay, maybe just one milliliter per cup. But if you drink one milliliter per cup, if you drink 10 cup, you have already drunk uh, the whole uh, 100 and uh, so on and so forth. If you drink uh, one milliliter and then every cup that you drink a little bit of that uh, acid poison, why not just say, I no longer want that poison in my life uh, in the name of Jesus? And Christianity wants us to teach people you can still continue to drink poison uh, and uh, at least at a small dose. Christ died for our sins and we agreed to serve him acceptably. Let us do so in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, we thank you. 
Thank you because Christ did not die in vain. There is power in the blood of Jesus to cleanse our conscience from dead work, to stop sin ruling over your, our lives. For when you are coming, it is apart from sin, but for the salvation of this body to give us a glorified body. We only are appointed to live once. So we pray that uh, our life on earth will count. Our life on earth will count for your glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very much.